What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is Zach and we are here to do another trailer breakdown this time on the Avengers special look trailer that was dropped a couple days ago in order to announce ticket sales which literally broke the freaking internet. It was crazy. But yeah, we're a little pressed for time today, so I'm just going to jump right through this, do this very quickly. We're going to go through scene by scene. I'm not going to deep dive too much into it because we're only a few weeks away. There's really no point in racking your brains around it anymore because what's that going to get you? Just It's just going to get you a lot of sleepless nights, man. On top of the other sleepless nights that we already have because we're still waiting for this damn movie to get here. So yeah, let's just jump right into this shit, man. All right, so this trailer starts off right outside Avengers HQ with this nice little landscape shot just outside the front gate. Then it cuts to Bruce Banner here in the Avengers facility that we've seen in multiple trailers now. If we do this, we'd be going in shorthanded, he says. Obviously, we know what he's talking about, the loss of life. Then it cuts to Thor here looking on as people are talking. I don't know if this is the same scene or a different scene in the Avengers HQ. Who knows at this point? Not going to look into it. Then we got a nice shot here of a Rhodes that says, yeah, you mean because he killed all of our friends? obviously talking about what happened in Infinity War, realizing the situation that they are heavily outnumbered. Uh, then we got a nice shot of Black Widow here sitting outside in the rain. Now look at these windows over here. They're the same windows that you're going to see throughout this trailer, therefore verifying that this is Avengers HQ. Um, the big thing to note here is her hair. It's long and red with the blonde tips at the bottom. So this leads me to believe that this is well after the time jump, after a year or so has gone by, after whatever their first mission ends up being. Because my theory from the beginning was... At some point early in the movie, with Carol Danvers coming into the fold, they're going to rush an attempt to go find Thanos on his farm and attack him. And it's going to result in a catastrophic failure, probably the loss of a few Avengers. Carol Danvers might get killed, Thor might get killed, War Machine might get killed. Someone, I think someone's going to die because the Avengers need to be defeated. And I think Thanos is going to somehow destroy the gauntlet, destroy the stones. I don't know because he accomplished his mission. He has nothing else to prove. So... What's the best way to give the Avengers the biggest fuck you is to destroy the stones or destroy the gauntlet and probably kill a few of them. So he probably defeats them early on. Then they come back to Earth defeated. All hope is lost. And then a few years go by because they need to fail in order to win big against Thanos. They need to fail again in this movie. I, I truly believe that. So during that time jump, Ant-Man shows up out of the quantum realm and Black Widow goes and finds Hawkeye and she has the same hairstyle in the movie. So that's what I think is going on here. This is after the time jump. This is probably before or after she goes and gets Clint. So let's move on to this next shot of Cap here in the bathroom. Now look at these windows again. The same windows as before. Avengers HQ. This is probably after he shaved the iconic masculine beard that he rocked so beautifully in Infinity War. Now, at the same time, Black Widow is voicing over, we owe this to everyone who's not in this room to try. Now, of course, we all know that's the same exact line that was used in the last trailer, so there's really nothing much more to talk about that. So then it cuts to the nice Marvel Studios logo with the 10-year anniversary thing, even though it's not 10 years anymore, it's 11 years now, but who cares, it still looks beautiful to me. Then we shoot to a really nice shot of Rocket and Nebula here. Now, here's what I think's going on. This is after Tony and Nebula have returned to Earth outside the Avengers HQ. Now, obviously, this is the scene where Rocket and Nebula have both learned from each other that all of the other Guardians have since perished, and they are both heartbroken. Um, and they're pretty much all they have left. Actually, they're all they have left. Uh, so this is a nice little moment here, uh, holding hands. You know, it's really a nice turn from Rocket and Nebula from before because these two have always been the, the toughest Avengers in a sense of they've never really shown emotion too much. So it's nice to see them in a new light, if that makes any sense. It's nice to see them embrace each other and realize that, that they're pretty much all they have left. So yeah, really, really touching scene. And that's followed by another touching scene of Pepper and Tony reuniting. And I kind of wish they wouldn't have shown this in the trailer. I mean, I knew we knew this was going to happen, but I, I, I wish they would have saved this little nugget for the actual movie. But still, it's nice to see them two embrace because I'm sure you can imagine how heartbroken Pepper was to, you know, when Tony suddenly went missing and she probably thought he was dead. So, you know, it's a nice embrace. And this kind of debunks that theory of Pepper putting on the rescue armor and going to save Tony. You know, it kind of puts, kind of nips that in the bud. But I do think Pepper will be suiting up at some point because there are rumors that a huge battle is supposed to take place in the third act of the movie of 40, 50 superheroes against Thanos. So she might be in on that. Who knows? But um, yeah, at the same time, all this is going on. Tony is voicing over. It's not about how much we lost. It's about how much we have left. Really good line there. So let's move on to this next shot of the Avengers HQ that we've seen in multiple other trailers. And then it's followed by this money shot of Tony in his Iron Man suit up in the sky in what's clearly New York. Now, there's two things to note from this shot right here. 
one this suit i, I believe it's mark 85 they're saying it's it's one of his most recent ones it is a nice callback to the original comics the golden age of the golden arms and the golden legs love the look of this suit it looks much more realistic because you know i loved infinity war but there were a few times where tony's suit looked very cgi and just a little bit messy here's the other thing about this scene i think this is present day tony in the past during the battle of new york during the avengers although i don't know if it's during the battle because i can't really see any explosions or alien beams or anything like that so i i it's, it's too hard to tell right now and i'm not going to kill myself trying to think about it but i do think this is present tony in the past a lot of people are saying he could be flying up to stark tower here to look down on something maybe the portal i don't know we'll have to wait and see but that's what i think is going on here i think he's in the past right now which kind of further proves my theory of them using the quantum realm to go back in time and we already knew there were set photos of them during the battle of new york but this pretty much more or less confirms it so let's move on to this next shot of hawkeye here in the avengers hq you'll notice the same window pattern again and if you look at the ceiling lights remember these ceiling lights because apparently there was a new tv spot that dropped i think it was yesterday the day before and in it there's a new shot of war machine and rocket falling what to what looks to be during a battle and it looks like the same lighting texture is seen above so it leads me to believe that this theory of thanos attacking avengers hq could come true so we'll get on more of that in a minute but um yeah hawkeye here standing like a true boss man with this badass new sleeve i mean look at this ink dude this ink is money it's it's just awesome got the skull here with the samurai outfit on he has really adopted this new ronin identity because like i said before we all know his family probably turned to dust right in front of him so yeah really interested to see how this new personality and attitude looks on hawkeye here because that that ink looks badass so yeah let's move on to another shot here at black widow it's pretty much the same identical shot from the last trailer just a different part of the conversation her smiling at something and then it's followed by another shot of thor Summoning Stormbreaker right in front of Carol. Now, this was in the last trailer, although this is a different angle, a better angle, I think, because the hammer looks much more menacing here. But, um, you know, and then she smiles at him. Pretty much the same shit from the last trailer that we already talked about. Uh, then we got a nice shot here of all the Avengers standing up looking at something. Now, here's my thing with this. I think this is a shot just for the trailer. I don't, I just don't, I don't know. Something about this shot seems off. It's like, I don't think anyone's attacking. Because if you look at Ant-Man, he's getting up kind of like, oh, yeah, who's here? Who's here? Somebody here? He's getting up real casual-like, you know, and nobody looks alarmed. I don't know. Are they watching something on on a screen? I, it's, it's way too hard to tell right now. Like, I don't think it's Thanos attacking because I think they'd be more alarmed. But it's, it's very hard to tell. So I don't know if this scene is real or if it's like that one shot in the first Infinity War trailer where they duped us out with the Hulk. So I don't know, it's, it's, it's very hard to tell, but um, it's nice to see Tony and Cap together again side by side. But yeah, man, something about this scene just seems off. I don't know. And where's Hulk? Where's Thor? Where's, where's Carol? You know, I just, it's, it's too hard to tell, but like I said, I'm not going to get too deep into it, man. It's just a badass shot. So then we got this money shot. Now, this is a shot I really wanted to talk about because this is where I think a lot of uh, fans' theories have been confirmed now including mine now here's what i think is going on in this scene i think this is present day tony because you look at the gray in his hair and i think this is 2012 captain america from the first avengers i think tony is back in the past right now a lot of people are saying this suit looks weird i'll tell you why it looks weird because it looks like it's a cgi suit i think in reality he's going to be wearing his avengers one costume because like i said this is a younger captain america from the first avengers movie because look at the background it's very the color palette the lighting the buildings this looks very battle of new yorkish from avengers one and if you remember, there were some leaked set photos from Avengers 4 filming that had Tony in this exact same outfit with the same hairstyle talking to Chris Evans, who was wearing his Avengers 1 costume. And also Ant-Man was there. So this kind of leads me to believe that this is present day Tony has gone back in time to the first Battle of New York in the first Avengers movie. And he's talking to Chris Evans. And plus, another, another thing that gives it away is look at Chris Evans' neck right here. It looks like this is... It looks like the shading or the masking is just a little... It just looks weird. It doesn't look real. This suit doesn't look real. Um, it doesn't look artificial. So that's kind of what leads me to believe that he's in his Avengers 1 costume. So this pretty much confirms that they're going to go back to previous events. So I'm really on board for that. As long as they don't fuck up the future too much or create some type of ridiculous paradox. So we'll see. And then it's followed by this shot of them shaking hands. And a lot of people are saying, oh, well, that's Ant-Man. It's fucking not Ant-Man. I don't think it's Ant-Man, dude. 
I think this is a fake costume and a fake sleeve. I think this is going to be Cap in his original costume from the same shot as before. Because if you think about it, why would Tony need to say, do you trust me? Captain America already trusts him. At the end of Civil War, the very end, in that letter he gave him, he pretty much forgave Tony. He said, hey, man, I'm here when you need me. You know, he pretty much apologized to him there. So Tony wouldn't need to ask him that. What makes more sense is if Tony is back in the past and says, hey, I'm from the future. Here's what's going on. Here's what's happened. I know you think this is crazy, but you just you got to trust me. Do you trust me? That's a lot more believable. So that's what I think is going on here. Let's move on to the next shot here. Well, we get this real quick shot of April 26th, which is a few weeks away. So everybody be sure to live in a bubble. Protect yourselves because we have to make it to April 26th to see this movie. So be careful. And then we get this shot of the Benatar here leaving a planet with some purple around it. Now, a lot of people are saying this is Morag. Now, of course, Morag is the planet from the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie where Star-Lord gets the Power Stone at the very beginning. Now, a lot of people are saying, why would they be on Morag to go get the Power Stone? But it's like, why would they go that far back? Because if they get the Power Stone from Morag, then it's pretty much going to ensure that the Guardians never existed, or or not existed, but it's, it's going to confirm that the Guardians never met. So, why would they go that far back? Why wouldn't they just go to Xandar when it's in the vault and get it then? So, I, I don't know. It's, it's going to... It's, I don't know. It's, it, this is where it gets a little confusing, you know, but like I said, I'm not going to kill myself over it thinking about it. So then the ship jumps to light speed, but I think once it jumps to light speed, it's, it's a different shot. I don't think this is one continuous shot of the, of the ship leaving, uh, that planet and jumping to light speed. I think the light speed is a different shot, but inside the ship, we got Carol here with the team with rocket, Captain America, Thor, war machine and black widow. And she still has her Infinity War hairstyle, so this leads me to believe this is early on. This looks like their first attempt to uh, rush up on Thanos and attack him. And of course, Cap's in his Winter Soldier costume, and I think Nebula's here in the back somewhere as well. I think this is part of the shareholder scene meeting where they talk about going after Thanos, and Nebula says, I know where he is. And so they, they dart off to go find him. So then it cuts to a shot of Tony holding a picture of him and Peter Parker when times were a lot simpler and happier and it looks like happy hogan maybe might be giving the bunny ears behind him who knows but um yeah you could really see the pain in tony's eyes reflecting of how much this loss has been devastating to him of losing peter right in front of his eyes as well as all of the other avengers and realizing the severity of what thanos has done and at the same time thanos is saying you could not live with your own failure where did that bring you back to me so then it cuts to a nice shot of uh, thanos's massive sanctuary two ship um, with, with a couple of Q ships underneath it. Now, this planet right here, a lot of people are saying is Xandar. So this might be a flashback to the scene where Thanos acquires the Power Stone from Xandar. Because I always thought it was a little weird that Thanos starts Infinity War with the Power Stone already in his hand. And the Russos did say that they filmed the scene of Xandar being decimated, but they didn't use it. So I'm thinking they're going to use it for this movie. I think there's a reason they didn't show him getting the Power Stone in the first movie, because I think the Avengers travel back to get the Power Stone before Thanos gets it, and there's a battle there. That's what I think is going on at some point. So that's why I said earlier about Morag, the purple planet. I was like, why would they go back and get it there when they could just get the Power Stone from Xandar before Thanos gets it? So I don't know. It's confusing, but whatever. Let's move on to this next shot of Nebula and War Machine in the ship. I guess they're looking up at Thanos' ship or a planet. Who knows? Not going to try to figure it out. Then we got a shot of Thor here. It looks like the same sequence as him in that Super Bowl spot. Pretty much the same identical shot, if not slightly different. And then it cuts to a shot of Rocket here. He looks like he's in the same spot as Thor with the lighting and stuff like that. Now, a lot of people are saying, look at the floor here. The floor looks like Thanos' throne room in his ship. So why would they be on his ship? Maybe they infiltrate his ship at some point because it would kind of make sense with Hawkeye running in the corridor from the Outriders with the explosion and the you know the red lighting. Maybe it is on Thanos' ship. Maybe they go to his ship while he's on Xandar. Maybe that's where they go back in time to get the Power Stone is right as he gets to Xandar or right before and they infiltrate his ship to hold him off, I guess. Who knows? And then we get this shot of Captain America on the ground looks like he's gotten the shit beat out of him this is clearly the same sequence as before in the other trailer where he's tightening up his shield at the same location during the midst of a pretty gruesome looking battle uh and then it shows the money shot here of thanos beaming down in his blue beam which a lot of people are saying it could be the bifrost it is not the bifrost the bifrost is rainbowish color uh this is clearly the blue beams that beam down his children in infinity war now why would thanos be using this can't he just teleport with the Space Stone? 
maybe at this point in time the Avengers have already stolen a stone and he has lost the space stone or something like that. Who knows? Another theory floating around is this is Thanos beaming down on Xandar after they have destroyed the planet and he is beaming down to get the Power Stone, but he runs into the next shot, the Avengers. They're already there waiting for him. That's what a lot of people are thinking is going on here is he's beaming down to Xandar to get the Power Stone and the Avengers are waiting for him as you see in this next shot with Tony walking up. But I don't know, man. I just, a lot of this rubble looks very Earth-like. Like, you know, concrete, rebar, catwalks, and construction. I don't think Xandar has that, man. Xandar was a lot more tropical. It had more futuristic tech. It had more, you know, futuristic style buildings and stuff like that. I just, this looks very Earth-like to me. So I think this is when Thanos attacks the compound. I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to tell. Honestly, because in this next shot, we got Iron Man, Cap, and Thor walking up to Thanos, who is clearly sitting down with his sword and his helmet propped up. So is this pre-battle, he's waiting for them? Is this middle of the battle where he's subdued, or is this after he's defeated? Or are they going in, are they moving in on him to deliver the final blow? It's, it's, it's way too hard to tell right now. But all I know is, this is all the same battle from the previous trailers with Nebula and Rocket and War Machine and and cap and whatever this battle is i don't think this is the climax of the movie this is probably the second act because i think the climax of this movie is going to be a, ma a massive battle with all the other dust avengers coming back into the picture and all of them taking on thanos where that would be i have no idea but um yeah that's pretty much it it cuts to the title card and then it cuts to tickets on sale now which like i said broke the internet so that's gonna do it man hey we got a few more weeks to wait so I want to know y'all's thoughts. Let me know. Send me some messages. I want to hear your theories, man. I want to hear your thought process. You know, let's talk about it. I love talking about this stuff. But until then, I'm Zach. This has been another trailer breakdown on the Indie Rundown Podcast YouTube channel. We're out.